MTV Icon is sponsored by MSN Messenger. They kind of had this weird, mysterious, dark side to them. They just strike that place in me, you know, that sad, lonely love place. I can't think of another band that commands that kind of attention. You could see why they're, they're so legendary. Their music and their look together is definitely I iconic, you know? Wild hair and this pale face and this smeared lipstick. His uh, songs are timeless. He writes about love and heartbreak and depression and, you know, fantasy. I can't think of another band, actually. It's been out 25 years and they're still making good music. I think they're one of the greatest bands for sure. Tonight is a celebration of a band whose integrity, passion, melancholy, and humor have made them superstars in stadiums and heroes in bedrooms the world all over. Once upon a time in a mysterious and distant suburb, there lived a naughty little boy called Robert. Robert dreamed of being a musician and he chased that dream on stage as soon as he could. The very first time I ever went on stage was actually with a band called the Crawley Goat Band. <laughs> he played the kind of weird sort of jug band music. I was about 10. But they'd run out of goats in Crawley, so Robert formed his first band with his classmates. Looking back on it now, their first gig at school was a total success. They were just awful, and people just walked off. The band was called Malice, and that was our only show and uh, I got thrown out of school because of it. Starting new bands out of school, Robert soon learnt it's not what you play, but who with and why. I'd love to say it's because my overwhelming talent on bass that Robert picked me. No, Robert and I were mates, and that was it. Their early existential hits made them a band apart, and they knew that they were unique. I once read that you were called the Pink Floyd of the 80s. What do you think of that? No, we're not at all. They're the cure of the 80s. I really did think it was us against the world and everything. And it was a battle that Simon and Robert fought in the dark. We went through a progression where we did kind of get heavier and heavier and darker and darker, which I think generates this whole notion of us being this kind of like dark, gloomy band. But then into all that darkness came a light, and the songs just got happier. I think he couldn't continue going down the dark, the, the dark road. The dark road had a, a dark ending, and it would have done him in if he'd carried on with it. I wanted us to do kind of three-minute pop songs. And everyone likes these three minutes. They're the ones that the kids like and the grandparents. And you don't have to try to like them. They're just, oh, they're infectious tunes. Millions of people love those infectious tunes, and quite a few people joined and left the band over the years until we have this, The Ultimate Cure. I started working for the band as, as a guitar only. I uh, answered an advert in the paper. <laughs> and he found the wrong number. <laughs> when they finished the Kiss Me album, they asked me to join for the tour. After about a week, Robert asked me to stay. He's regretted it ever since. I think this lineup of the band is the best lineup that we've ever had. It's like a dream, dream come, come true. <laughs> and this dream continues, because The Cure are famous all over the world, filling the airwaves with their music, the charts with their albums, and stadiums with their fans. Their, their shows are amazing, and they're, they're, they're very long. They get very intense and epic and build up, and it's a big emotional development. And so after 26 years of making magical music and dreaming, these five imaginary boys were praised throughout the land and made MTV icons. And now, your host, the original Antichrist superstar, Mr. Marilyn Manson. 
There's no other band still making music that means so much to me. The Cure showed me that there was more to life than metal. The image be darker and heavier than what I already knew, but with something extra. Romance for the ladies, but still heavy and clever too. Here's Blink-182 with a letter to Elise. AFI, Deftones, and Razor Light pay their tribute to Cure, the masters of the cheerful nightmare, after these special messages. Nuovo Epident White Complete protegge il bianco naturale dei denti. Epident White Complete. Gyeongsu è già stato espulso nove volte e non vuole più mettersi nei guai. Ma non sarà tanto facile. Nella sua nuova scuola studenti e professori sono in lotta alla ricerca del manoscritto del maestro. Dalle tre. MTV Icon is sponsored by MSN Messenger. Welcome back to MTV Icon for the Cure. 
This band, like all great artists, brings together the conscious with the unconscious. And a rare combination of mirth and melancholy. What Tim Buckley called in one word, happy sad. That's a reason why they've managed to mean so much to so many. Testing. Multi-platinum success one year can mean nothing the next. There's hundreds of bands who sold millions of records without ever leaving a trace, but that's not the case with The Cure. After all, you judge the significance of an artist by their impact on the medium. They're like one of the most important bands in music because they change the way people think about music. I love groups that are really edgy, groups that say things in styles that are very different, and that's what I love about The Cure, and I rock on. They are mesmerizing and hypnotic and romantic at the same time. I think there was something beautifully romantic uh, in all of Robert Smith's misery that I related to. It feels good sometimes to wallow in your own grief and depression and despair. And The Cure are the perfect band to do that. I love The Cure. The Cure have always been around my life. I used to even have dreams about The Cure when I was a kid. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're about 15 years old. I mean, we did a, a cover of Boys Don't Cry. Yeah, she's usually influenced by them. Well, mainly because of their music, but also uh, Robert Smith's image. I went, I want to be like you. We've always been flattered by um, other artists name checking The Cure. The music on Californication was. A lot of it was very influenced by The Cure, and no, no critics ever picked up on that. The Cure has definitely been a, been a part of our music. The Cure, one of, only one of the greatest bands ever. Amazing. It doesn't really validate what I do, but it enhances what I do immeasurably to think that we are inspiring other people to do something. I've been a fan of The Cure since the, the, the 80s, you know, but I think it was, like, with the Disintegration album that I was just, like, Oh, my God. I bought a cassette tape of The Cure's Disintegration, put it in my van, and just followed the sun west and drove to the sea listening to it. No. And it's a fine memory of a fine record. 17 Seconds and Faith, those two albums were very influential on Flea and myself. I'm a big fan of The Cure, but uh, I would say I'm, a, I'm the wrong category of fans because I, I, I heard about The Cure with the head on the door. Yeah, we are big fans. There's The Beatles and David Bowie and The Cure, and I see them all in kind of like a line, and like I feel like you can constantly go back and get things out of it. In turn, we were all inspired by people to do what we do. You have to be, I mean, it's like, there's always someone you think, I would love to be like that. So to think that we could be that person that to, to other people, it's a really good feeling. The Cure being an icon is simply awesome. Those guys deserve it. Robert Smith has always had a special place in my heart. So uh, congratulations for being an icon. Robert Smith once said, when I was young, I always dreamed of having a group that was adored by... Nice proof that... Here's AFI with Just Like Heaven.
until you suffer for your art. You let your heart scream out to its song and try to change the world through your pain. And all the press want to talk about is why is a grown man wearing makeup? important things about the cure is that is that Robert Smith has a very readily identifiable image. The hair, the like Edward says the makeup. They kind of look like, you know, vagabondish, ragamuffiny sort of rejects from the haunted mansion ride in Disneyland. <laughs> they created their own genre. Cure have long been the pop band that it's all right for goths to like. Oh, God. We love the goths. Goth as a scene has evolved and adapted since its birth in the early 80s, and several of those evolutions have the Cure's fingerprints all over them. Certainly Robert Smith's look, for example. I'm going to show you how to transform your face into the very beautiful Robert Smith. First important step to this look, pale powder. I have never, ever, ever in 25 years of doing this, ever wore white face powder. The eyes were like a square of black around the eye. The lips looked like he'd fallen on the lipstick rather than actually put it on. His lipstick's on crooked. Yeah, yeah, he, he, he didn't do a very good job. <laughs> this is the actual MAC Ruby Woo lipstick that Robert favors. It's almost like a slash across the mouth. Well, like, if he didn't have, like, the makeup and he didn't sing like that, then he'd be pretty cool. <laughs> Looking like you kissed the knife is only half of it. Big black hair is rock and roll, but the biggest, blackest, big black hair was always the cure. There was a period, I suppose, in the late 80s when we did have fantastically big hair. You know, we started to play stadiums, and so the hair had to become stadium size. My name's Thomas. I'm Robert Smith's official hairdresser, and here I'm going to recreate for you the look. I used to spend about a good hour cutting the hair. I don't need to worry about styling too much, just kind of get the back combing in, get the knots out. Yeah, it's, it's not really one that gets requested very much in the salon. It's very much the original bed head. There we go. Easy steps, how to create the Robert Smith. That look is really crucial to the cure. If you see a video on the TV, the second you see Robert Smith, you go, oh, that's, a, that's the cure. Even if, you, even, if you, even if the sound's turned down, you know that's the cure. Still, there's no shortage of rough-looking bands with big hair and bad makeup. Think of Duran Duran back in the day, or Duran Duran right now. What made The Cure stand out was their fearless sense of humor brought out on screen by this band. When I came along, their music was kind of really quite sort of dirty. No, 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 I'm going to take loads of drugs and drop into this hole and disappear. And then suddenly, I came along when they'd done Let's Go To Bed, and there was a whole change of mood. It's really strange, actually, because most of the general media around the world became aware of The Cure through the stupid pop videos, you know, and yet I was still doing interviews then about, so, so, you are very dark, you know, and I think, like, I've just been sitting with, like, kittens on my lap in a, in a polka dot shirt. But, of course, the reason the videos work is because the songs are so damn good. Without the songs, n none of the rest of it would matter. It wouldn't matter what I said or what I looked like or anything, because people w wouldn't be bothered, because there'd be nothing to be bothered about. <laughs> Songs sung with by the band that wrote them. A 20th century idea enjoying a resurgence thanks to bands like The Cure and bands that like The Cure. This is Razor Light and Boys. And now, cry.
Most bands have consumers, but The Cure have fans. It starts with the first uh, catchy tune and a cute lyric. Then you like the band, then you buy all the records. And then it's a lifestyle. A burning love. Then an obsession. Obsession. Oh, so, so. with our fans. They're all beautiful and clever. I think The Cure are fantastic. Their music has shaped me as a person. Music-wise, lyric-wise, I can relate to it. The music has a certain sound to it which takes you away into a dream world which nobody else can penetrate. I basically use them to rebel against my parents. Very proud to be a Cure fan in this day and age. The Cure uh, tend to have a um, very important impact on fans. Young people recognize themselves in The Cure music and especially in Robert Smith's lyrics. So it's helped them with their adolescent issues. Crumbs. I think a lot of people who feel a bit alienated from a normal way of life can think, oh, I'll go and listen to The Cure. Anyone that calls themselves a Cure fan is generally very passionate. Also, maybe at times obsessed. I don't think many Cure fans were good at games either. There's something about what we do that transcends the music. It's like the way we do it and, like, and what we mean to people. And it's like that draws people together. And so they, f they feel there's something more than just like, you know, watching a band play. In other words, it goes a lot deeper than a Cure t-shirt and a funny haircut. I think we all have our own sort of style. We're all kind of different people but we have the cure in common. The dress code is really important in uh, fans because they want to be recognized as a fan of bands and they also want to be different from the other people. Once you hear a few songs, it just gets kind of obsessive. You have this attachment to them where you almost can't let them go at points. Like Michael Jackson, Elvis, and Marilyn Monroe, Robert Smith is haunted by an industry based on his identity. Personally, I think some of the tribute bands I've seen um, did it quite well. They were right. Some are better than others. I mean, if you close your eyes, you almost think it's the cure on stage. There's an Australian cure cover band, and the singer came up to me and said, we sound more like you than you do. <laughs> on any level, that isn't possible. But it's no surprise that it was possible to turn Robert into a cartoon. We had just started the show, and it was just this very small, rinky-dink little show on a cable channel. And when we decided to put Robert in the show, it was just a complete lark. Is this Robert Smith of The Cure? Yes, it is. That was an, an ambition that I didn't think I'd fulfill, actually, to, to become a, a real-life cartoon character as opposed to a pretend one. You're awesome. <laughs> You're so awesome. Who are you? Dude, Robert Smith of The Cure. Me. It was probably the coolest thing I've ever done. Robert Smith kicked... In so many obvious ways, but I think he actually could kick some ass. There's no higher compliment actually than getting into something like the Simpsons or South Park because it's kind of culturally more significant than anything else you can ever do. I think. Goodbye, Robert Smith. Thank you for your help. Visit us again.
because of my teenage lust, apparently I have a lust for metal. I came to the cure pretty late. It was like joining a secret society, a secret shared by everyone here tonight. Please welcome the Deftones, if only tonight we could sleep!
the Cure live right here. In esclusiva per MTV, Enrico Silvestrin presenta Elton John Live at Supersonic. In occasione dell'uscita del suo nuovo album Peach Tree Road, il baronetto del pop britannico presenta per la prima volta in Italia i brani inediti ed i suoi più grandi successi. Geniale, fragile, eccentrico, il protagonista della scena musicale mondiale da oltre 30 anni si esibirà sul palco di Supersonic in una performance indimenticabile. MTV Club Generation in special partnership with Ford K. MTV Icon is sponsored by MSN Messenger. For every person you see in the audience tonight, there was another thousand who would have loved to have been here. Because Robert keeps threatening to kill off the carrot special. Every time we see them after 26 years, most bands will be calling in the session musicians or morticians, but not the cure. People sort of say to me, like, oh, you, you know, you're 45 now, you're still doing this. Like, and I think, great, I am, but I still really like doing it. For most bands, 26 years, 13 studio albums, 34 singles, 8 gold albums, 6 platinum albums, 1 multi-platinum album, a total of 27 million sales, would be a dead weight, a tombstone. At the very least, enough. For The Cure, it's time to begin again. Oh, this is a really good trip. But The Cure's best trick is their oldest. They keep making music that comes from the heart. Which is why the new metal Sven Gali knew that his 21st century take on the band's sound would still have the same magic. What I hope to achieve doing The Cure is to have somebody feel the love for music that I felt. Neil Stravinson very cleverly manipulates people in the studio without them knowing that they're being manipulated. In fact, it was like seeing me in action watching us <laughs> work. This was my ambition. If you listen to the record, it's, it's so giving that if you're a B student, you'll get A's. And we ended up with a record, I think, is the, the best or the most passionate thing that we've ever done. This passion of the Cure continues with the celebrated Curiosa Touring Festival, where they are joined by like minds, including Muse, The Rapture, and Interpol. I've really enjoyed this last tour, playing with different bands. I felt really inspired, actually. It's been, been really good. Everyone's got on really well. It's different from a normal festival, where you're just trying to get a broad sweep of musical styles. All the bands complement each other. Sometimes I sort of feel like there's something wrong with me. You know, that I should somehow be doing something more grown up than what I do. They've got another 25 years in them. Easy, if not more. I can't, I can't honestly think of anything I would rather be doing, so I just keep doing this. And the seriously simple lesson behind this longevity is don't do as you're told. I think that the secret of it is to... When I've been doing things with the cure, I haven't really believed in what we're doing. So, that's how you get to mean a lot to millions of people and how you get to be seen as an icon by the public and by your peers. I think it is fair to say that The Cure are icons. First day I've heard of The Cure, I fell in love with them. If it's iconic that lots of people walk the streets looking like you. The reason I started wearing eyeliner and painting my fingernails black was because of The Cure. If it's iconic that thousands of musicians across the world draw something from your style. When they make new albums, they always have this touch that we like. And yeah, it's a very important band. If it's iconic that they've sold millions and millions of records, then yeah, The Cure are definitely icons. Robert, you're an icon, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Bravo. <laughs> the fact that we mean something to the whole breadth of people, um, I suppose, if anything, that kind of makes it easier to wear the mental of, like, icon. But if it was real, <laughs> we'd have to decline the entire thing. But we all know it's just a joke game. Let the dark in your hearts and the light in your soul welcome the cure on stage now!
I've been Marilyn Manson, you've been you. Let's show appreciation for The Cure, MTV icons. Thank you. Good night. MTV Icon is sponsored by MSN Messenger.